Hello everyone, welcome to the second video of the 100 day challenge of 100 classes for biopharmaceutics in a short video format. So in the previous video we have just seen the drug absorption and today we are going to cover the drug absorption mechanisms. So whereby we have already left with the drug absorption mechanisms whereby we have started the paracellular, the transcellular and the types of the paracellular transcellular mechanisms also. Third one was your phagocytosis and the pinocytosis classified as the vesicular transport. So one by one, let's quickly see what exactly these are based on. This is what we have seen in the previous section where we have covered the mechanism that can be through the intracellular transport or the transcellular across the membrane. Now, because it is going to across the membrane, it is it will be based on the concentration gradient as well as the nature and the type of drug. So, it can be passive transport or it can be active transport. In the passive, we have passive effusion, pore transport, iron pair and facilitated diffusion. In the active transport, we have primary active or secondary active transport which is further categorized into symports and antiports. In the paracellular or intercellular transport which occurs through mainly through the tight junctions, we have to see either it is going to permeate through the tight junctions or it will be through the persorption mechanism whereby the dead enterocytes which I had mentioned previously also which are basically the temporary openings created in order to facilitate the transport mechanism. Third one we have is the vesicular transport just like the how uh, amoeba is going to engulf the food material which I have previously mentioned that is going to be the phagocytosis process okay otherwise we have is the pinocytosis mechanism also okay so quickly let's see these mechanisms in very uh, brief manner number one is going to be the passive diffusion just like what i said in the passive diffusion you have to note down the concentration gradient is going to be the driving force here the concentration gradient is will be the driving force right so the drugs which are lipophilic the drugs which are lipophilic in nature which is mentioned and in the size range of 100 to 400 will be easily able to pass through the membrane and transport through the and come into the systemic circulation. Now this transport mechanism because it is going to be based on the nature of the cell membrane based on its lipophilic nature based on the drugs lip and lipophilic nature the like dissolve like concept says it all and it will be able to transport the drug across the membrane. Second one is going to be the pore transport. In the previous class, we have seen the diagram of the cell membrane whereby we have the lipid structures and between the lipid structures, if you have noticed, there was pores that were mentioned. These, there were the aqueous pores that were mentioned and the size of the aqueous pores very important were going to be the 4 to 10 angstrom. Through these tiny pores, the drug is actually able to pass through it but because the pore is so tiny, the drugs are actually transported across uh, the cell membrane via water flux or we can say solvent drag. So here the driving force is going to be the osmotic pressure. Here the driving force is going to be the osmotic pressure or you can be asked water flux or you can also mention the solvent drag now that is going to push past the drug through the membrane and it should have less size less than 100 only then it will be able to pass through these aqueous pores third one is going to be the iron pair transport in the iron pair transport the drug is able to find out its counter iron now with the counter iron it is able to form the complex that complex is easily able to facilitate the entry of the drug through the membrane into the systemic circulation whereby the counter ion is again free. Okay, last one, last second one is the carrier mediated transport. Now, sometimes the transport is not able to occur on its own. It requires certain carriers that will be able to transport the drug from one end to the other end. These carriers, specifically these carriers themselves are known polar so that they are more acceptable for the membrane as well as they are structure specific due to which their entry will be very limited it is going to follow a capacity limited process the number of carriers will be limited so the drugs which are able to bind through the carrier just like the lock and key hypothesis mechanism they will be transported across the membrane freeing up the carrier and the drug will be able to cross and the carrier will be free okay Last one is the endocytosis which is a part of the vesicular transport mechanism whereby your drugs or the nutrients are able to pass the cell membrane just like the engulfing mechanism and it is able to pass across the membrane. Okay. 
Now, any other point other than this, we can see here, number one in the passive diffusion, what I have mentioned, it is also called as non-ionic diffusion, whereby the driving force is going to be your passive, diff uh, driving force is going to be your concentration gradient. It is non-saturable, but in the case of carrier, students, I have mentioned in the carrier transport, whereby the, the it is a capacity limited props process. So that is why, because it is going to be capacity limited process, it can be saturable. It is structure specific as well as saturable. While the passive diffusion is not saturable and it is governed by the fixed law of diffusion. Please note down the equation I am writing here for you all, whereby the rate of drug diffusion is equal to DAKW of O, which is the partition coefficient C G I T minus C upon H. Okay, this is going to be the equation for the uh, uh, your fixed law of diffusion. Second one was your pore transport, corrective transport or bulk flow, whereby the transport although will occur due to the solvent, rag, water, flux or the osmotic pressure that is going to facilitate the entry of the drug. Now this solvent drag but along with the drug should be able to around uh, soluble in the water soluble. Secondly, the size should be less than 100 Dalton. Only then it will be able to pass through the pore. It has example of urea, water and sugar. Third one was your iron pair transport which actually require a counter ion to be able to transport across the passage. Then we have in the carrier mediated uh, transport also we have faci uh, facilitated diffusion which is also a subtype of the carrier mediated transport mechanism that uh, operates along with the concentration gradient example entry of glucose into RBCs okay this is a basic passive transport next we have active transport which is categorized as the pa passive uh, number one a primary active and secondary active transport in the primary active transport we have iron pair transporters just like we have seen there will be a counter ion that will be able to facilitate the entry Secondly, we have is the ABC transporter or efflux pumps that are able to take the drug out of the cell, okay, which uh, treat the drug as a foreign material and are able to pass, uh, take the drug and just uh, remove them out of the uh, basic structure. So, efflux pumps are able to throw out the drugs, right, back into the systemic circulation. Second will be your secondary active transport. Now, primary active transport does not require direct ATP, while the secondary active transport requires direct ATP. It can involve both symport and antiport. Symport will be counter transport and the antiport will be the counter transport. This will be co-transport. This is a simple mechanism where, whereby you can see a simple diffusion process from along the concentration gradient. You can see from a region of the high concentration to a region of low concentration. Followed by the active transport, here is the ATP requirement. You can see this is pri primary active. So that is why it is going to be in single direction. It is a unidirectional process. Okay, in the secondary active, you can see this import, which is the co-transport. All the molecules are able to transport. Uphill movement is observed. Uphill movement that is going to uh, mark the process as the ATP driven process, direct requirement of the ATP. Now, due to this, the transport is going to occur both in the same direction. In the antiport, it is going to be in the reverse direction. So, that is sums up about the passive and the active transport mechanisms. Thank you so much. In the next video, we will be covering the carrier mediated transport.